So in today's notes, we're going to take a look at cross-sections and also Cavalieri's principle. So at the top, I'm just going to read the paragraph, the couple paragraphs actually. It says a cross-section is the intersection of a solid and a plane. So plane is 2D. So the cross-section is going to be 2D. So cross-sections uh, cross typically form 2D or plane figures. However, so think of your piece of paper as a slice, okay, with any solid. It can touch it just at the top, right? So that would just be one point. So it could also, in this case, we have the plane intersecting a square pyramid. It looks like a square. I don't know for sure. It may just be a rectangular um, pyramid. But you have to think about how the plane is intersecting. So it's intersecting how many faces in that picture. So within this uh, cross section here, the plane is hitting the bottom, right? It's hitting the um, right side, it's hitting the left side, and you can consider that maybe the front. So the plane intersects the solid in four faces. So that means it's going to have four sides on the cross section, okay? And in this, can you see what the cross section actually is? It's a trapezoid. So the plane, though, can intersect it just at the corner, right? So it only touches it in one point. And technically, a point has how many dimensions? Does it have a length, width, or height? None. Where a line is how many dimensions? Because you could just have the plane touch right here on the side where that would be, what's your dimension there for a line? Just one, length, yeah. So you have to take a look at the faces it's intersecting. The number of faces that it intersects is going to be the number of sides on your polygon or your cross section because the cross section is two-dimensional. But you also need to take a look, is it hitting flat sides or curved sides? And so we're going to sketch them down below. So reading the second paragraph, it just says people often refer to a cross section as being a slice of a solid. The result of the intersection of a plane and a solid may form more than one two-dimensional shape. How the plane intersects the solid and the type of faces intersected determines the types of edges on the two-dimensional um, figure. So let's take a look at the cross-section of the prisms and the cylinder. Okay? So that's our uh, first three rows in the table. And it says we're going to take a look at those cross-sections cut parallel to the base and those taken perpendicular. So we're going to sketch them, okay? So in the first solid, let's do the whole, let's do the left side of the column first. Let's do the triangular prism, trapezoidal prism, and cylinder cut parallel. So if you cut the triangular prism parallel to the base, so you can draw your line there, parallel to that base edge, parallel to the side edge, and then the other base edge of the triangle, your cross section, when you cut parallel to a base, is a triangle. Why is it going to be a triangle? Because the base of the prism is a triangle. So if you're slicing, say you just slice the top off directly parallel to the base, okay, then you're going to have a triangle. Okay, what about if you slice the trapezoidal prism uh, parallel to the base? You're going to get a trapezoid. So, again, to sketch the trapezoid, take your ruler or straight edge, draw the line parallel to one base of the trapezoid. You can draw it parallel to the top base and then draw your two sides. And when you slice a cylinder parallel to the base, what do you get? Circle. So draw your circle. You can draw it anywhere. So in a right prism and right cylinder, a cross section taken parallel to the base is the same as, the same shape as the base. And it's actually congruent 
to the base. Not only are they the same shape, but they're the same size. And we'll see there's some cross sections below that are the same shape, but not the same size because it comes to a point, yeah. All right, now those taken perpendicular to the bases. So if you were to slice a triangular prism perpendicular to the base, okay, so say we hit it here and we slice straight down. So we slice straight down here, straight down there, and then it's going to hit the bottom. Yeah, what's the slice? A rectangle. A trapezoidal prism? Do we also get a rectangle? Yeah. yeah. So say I slice right here. It's hitting the top. It's going to go straight down. The sides are flat, no curves, and then hit the bottom. Will we get a rectangle in the cylinder? Mm -hmm. Yes. Even though we're hitting curved sides, Okay, and slicing it up and down, but it's a vertical line. So across, I'm going to actually draw the line parallel to the bottom, and then down here. Now you can do a much better job at your seat, again, if you're using a straight edge or a ruler, to draw a better rectangle, triangle, trapezoid, or circle. All right, now let's look at the cone and the pyramid. Yeah, because they come to a point at the top. So when we take, and let's look at this, this parallel, for the square pyramid, pentagonal pyramid, and cone, is the slice still going to be in the shape of the base? Yeah. Is it going to be the same size? No. no. So when we take a slice here, the circle is still a circle but it's going to be, it's going to have a smaller radius, okay? So it's still a circle. Let's move up. So the pentagon here, so just draw your lines parallel, so straight across for the front uh, face, if you want to say, the right side, left side, and then you're going to go back to that edge in the back, lateral edge. So there's the pentagon, and then here's the square. Do you guys know the term for shapes that are the same shape? So a polygon that's the same shape, but that, I don't want to say polygon because circles are not polygons, but the same shape but not the same size. Similar is right. Nice job. So congruent, they have both the same shape and the same size, where these polygons, okay, or I should say all shapes because of the circle, they're all similar but not congruent. Good. So this is a pentagon and square. All right, now slicing perpendicular to the base. Um, let's start with the cone. Okay, so you're going to hit the cone. Say we slice, we're coming right down through the vertex of the cone. So it's going to hit this side here, which is at a diagonal, even though it's hard to see. And then it's also going to hit directly on the other side, which is a diagonal, and then come straight across, which is the shape of a triangle. Are we going to get also a triangle in the pyramid? Yeah. yeah. So say we slice again. Go, let's go right through um, the vertex. We don't have to. We're coming straight down here. And then I'm going to hit the back side and then come across the base. And then same here. Coming from the vertex straight down, back, and up. So on this page, we have the cross-sections for the sphere 
and the cube, triangular prism, right triangular pyramid, right cone, and that of a hemisphere. And we'll sketch those of the cylinder. So at the top, questions about the cross sections of a sphere? They're all circle. All right, now to the right of the cross sections of a cube. Okay, a cube has how many faces? Six. So if you're thinking about the cross sections for a cube, let's look at the first cross section, which is a triangle. The cross section is a triangle because it hits how many faces? Okay, so it makes sense that if it hits three sides, you're going to have a triangle, three sides on the cross section because you're slicing through three faces. The square is because you're slicing, your slice is hitting four sides. It's hitting the top, the right, the bottom, the left. Okay. The next one, a rectangle, just because we didn't slice it parallel to the base, we still get a rectangle even if you're slicing at a diagonal. Okay. The trapezoid, so there is a way to get a trapezoid on a cube okay, by hitting this top face, the left, right, and the bottom. In order to have a pentagon or a hexagon, you have to, for the pentagon, when you take the slice, hit how many faces? Five, hexagon, six. So will you ever have a cross section that's an octagon? Why? Because there's not a, only six faces, so there's not eight faces. So to the right, the maximum number of edges on a cross section equals the number of faces for any polygon. So if we had a heptagonal prism that has how many faces? Heptagonal. Eleven. No, heptagonal, so it has seven sides on the base, right? So that means seven rectangles going around, and then your top and bottom, nine. So the maximum number of edges on your cross section is going to be nine. So there'll be a multiple choice uh, question that'll say, for instance, the heptagon, can you have, you know, which of the following cross sections can you not have? If it had a decagon as an answer, then that would be the one that's correct because you cannot have a decagon as a cross section when you have a heptagonal prism. All right, down, take a look at the cross section of a triangular prism, since a triangular prism has five faces, the three rectangles and two bases, the number, the maximum number of edges on your cross section is five. Therefore, we can have up to a pentagon. And remember, it's a polygon, so triangle, unless you do, you know, you intersect just at the edge or vertex. And then here is for a right triangular pyramid. Now, what's interesting about the cone in the hemisphere is that they have curved edges and also a flat or curved face, the lateral face, and a flat base. So you can sketch. So for our cone, if you're hitting all the curved sides, you get a circle. So over here in the cylinder, if you're just hitting the curved sides, you can slice it. And will you get a perfect circle? Yeah. Um, so you get the oval itself. Just like with the cone, you get what's called a you know, part of an oval with a line segment as one of its sides. They're called truncated ovals. So to truncate, it means to shorten or cut off part of it. Okay. Well, later on we'll see truncated cones. So if you take a cone, you slice part of it off. It looks almost like, a, like sometimes a water glass or something like that. Those are the types of questions. So in the cylinder, you can have, so let's draw, it, goes, it hits the bottom here, and then it's hitting the curved surfaces, and you could also have a truncated oval. And the same goes for the hemisphere, and you can have the circle, okay, your ovals. Oh, actually, um, no, because it's the hemisphere, they will be circle and the part. Um, but then here, you're going to get that truncated circle. All right, first question, multiple choice. Which of the following shapes cannot be created by slicing a cube? Well, a cube has how many faces again? Six. So you can't have a polygon that has more than six sides, so cannot 
is the octagon. Is it possible to have a 12-sided cross-section for an octagonal prism? Well, how many faces on the octagonal prism? Ten. On the octagonal base, there's going to be a rectangle off from each of those sides. So we have eight rectangles, and then the top and bottom base. So explain. No. Um, so you can't, can't just say it only has ten faces. You got to say the cross section. What about the cross section? You can't just say. So you have to give a, a full explanation. The cross section um, can have what? I'll continue writing what you have, or what you said. Good. Took, took a while, but it came out correct. So the cross-section can have as many sides as the number of faces of the solid. Good enough. Okay. Find the area of the cross section that results from slicing the right cylinder parallel to the base, part A. Well, if you're slicing it parallel to base, that circle is congruent to the base. So the area is pi r squared. What's the radius? So it's equal to 121 pi feet squared, 11 squared is 121. Now, there needs to be more, when I was making my key, there needs to be more given in the second part. Because when you slice it perpendicular to the base, do you know, say your rectangle was over here. Do you actually know what that dimension would be? No. So we need to state that it has to go through what? Let's make it go through the center of the circle. So let's slice it here. Whoops, that went way too far. Well, actually, one of the sides of that rectangle is going to be not the radius, but the diameter. So this is going to be 22 by 10. So this just has to say um, perpendicular to the base and through the center of the base. So then um, 22 by 10. And we are in square feet. All right, and Cavalieri's principle is really easy. Um, it states, so right underneath that, uh, take a minute to circle true or false, and the statement is that these pieces maintain their same volume, volume no matter how they are moved or stacked. Think of a stack of coins, think of a stack of books, a stack of cards. Is the volume the same no matter how you arrange it? Yes. Okay, so the answer is true. And that's because Cavalieri's principle states that if two solids have the same, if they start with the same height, okay, so if two solids have the same height and they have the same cross-sectional area, at every level. Which solids don't have the same cross-sectional area at every level? So the pyramid and the, say, its respective prism that had the same right base area and height. And a cylinder and a cone, right? Because the cross-sectional area for a cone gets larger or smaller as you move towards the vertex. Smaller. 
Um, so if they have the same height and the same cross-sectional area at every height, then they have the same volume. So let's look at the last question of the notes, number four. So do the prisms have the same volume? Explain. So volume for any prism is capital B times H. Now, I should have changed the notes because on the regions, they won't just say explain, meaning you can calculate the volume and then show the volumes are equal. They say explain using Cavalier's principle. So that's what we're going to do. So what is the base area? Um, yep, 6 by 4 is 24. And what's the base area over here? The base area is 1 half the right triangle of 8 by 6, so 24. Do they have the same height? Yeah. yeah. So explain, do they have the same volume? Yes. Since the prisms have And what else has to be true? Yep, since the prisms have the same height and the same cross sectional area at each or every height, Um, from the base, the volumes are the same. 